All right, let's take a look at the bag. So, large paper towel bag. What do you think? I'm thinking no. I'm thinking that's going to get wrapped up on our equipment. Yeah, this one's definitely a no. This one could go to a store drop-off program at your local grocery store or something like that. Definitely want to keep it out of this facility and out of your curbside recycling bin. All right, what else do we have in here? Got a lot of good stuff. We're losing this one. This one naturally went into the no. And uh, we'll say, you know, some clamshells we can take if they're PET. This particular one, there's no resin code. That's what I, when I say PET, that's what I mean. So there's no uh, number code on the bottom of this. Uh, typically we would look for a number one. So in the absence of that, we'll say no. Here we've got a steel can. It does have a paper label. Paper label's not a problem. Recycle all of your steel cans. It's one of the more easily recycled things, easily collected things that we get in our facility. Don't worry about the paper label, just recycle it. Similar story here with, uh, this is a club soda bottle. This is a PET, or the number one I referenced earlier. This is okay, it's okay with the label on, it's okay with the lid on, yep. so that's a yes. And I will say one of the cool things a lot of the uh, bottlers are doing now on the cap is it actually says, recycle bottle with cap on. And so that's, that's one of the, the new things they've been doing to kind of promote that messaging, but it's true. Leave the cap on, leave the label on, make sure those get recycled. All right, this is an interesting one. So this one's difficult because the resin, it's a number two HDPE, can be recycled. So we recycle that at this facility. But the size might be difficult. Yeah. I don't know what you think about the size or if you have any rules of thumb there. Yeah, typically we look for two by two. Anything larger than that is okay because if it's smaller than that, there's a good chance we'll lose that in the screening process. So generally two by two inches is north of that is, is okay. So this is, we'll probably say no on this one. So for this one, we're gonna say trash, trash it. This one though, I'd say big enough. Yep. Let's recycle it. Let's you might see some other packages out here that have, you know, uh, an actual recycling logo, something like that where it says, you know, what it is. And it's actually a, a program called How to Recycle where it gives on pack directions for how that should be recycled or, or if that should be sent to landfill or, or store drop off program. Since I'm holding this one, we've got a nice paper box. It does have a little uh, metal fitment on it. Um, I would say, you know, if you want to be the perfect recycler, you can pull the metal fitment off. It's probably too small to get recycled, so that would go in the trash. But generally, I wouldn't worry about it. It's too small to make a difference. This will get sorted with other paper. It'll get to a paper mill, maybe one of our paper mills, and that won't be a problem in the recycling process. So, recycle it. All right, next up, we've got a gable top container. Uh, this had orange juice in it. Uh, in the case of this material, we can, uh, we can take this, even though there is a film barrier uh, because it contained liquid. Um, so this is something that the hydropulper in our mill system can handle. Um, again, in terms of rinsing it, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, triple rinsed clean or anything like that. We're just looking for it to be free of any residue, uh, any remaining liquid. As long as it's empty, we're okay. So we'll recycle. With the cap on, and we'll go quickly through some of these others with caps on. Go ahead, leave those caps on. You know, leave this, um, the, the wrapper on as well. There are some instances where maybe you'll see a full shrink sleeve over a bottle that they say, you know, can you please peel this off? But something like this where you can see the plastic, that means the equipment in the facility will see that plastic sort of correctly. So not a problem, recycle it. Similar, we've got uh, an aluminum can. This is a beer can, likely from a microbrew because it's got the, um, the um, label on it. Uh, it's not printed on, it's, uh, it's applied. Uh, we don't see too many of these, uh, but these are okay to include in your stream as well. So recycle. We've got a steel cap, uh, likely from some type of glass jar. Um, so this is okay. It would have been okay to leave on the glass jar, but if it's uh, independent, if it's by itself, uh, more than likely our, our steel magnets will capture this. So this is okay. Uh, here we have a, a snack can. So it's a rigid paper can. This is something that can be recycled as well. And this is one that a lot of people are unsure about, but I would say go ahead, recycle it. Yeah, and we see more and more of those. We've got uh, a syrup container here. Um, this is okay. Uh, again, it, I mentioned the orange juice uh, container earlier. You may not be able to get this one quite as, as clean, uh, but again, it doesn't have to be triple rinsed or anything like that. Again, we're looking for free of, of residue uh, or any content. 
Um, but in the case of this, we can certainly take this along with the lid as well. This is an HDPE container. So when this goes to an end user or secondary processor, they're going to shred this material and it's going to go through a wash line. Um, so that's going to take care of some of that residual material. Again, knowing that the consumer is going to have a very difficult time getting everything out of it. Um, again, if this were half full of, of product, that would present an issue. Uh, but as long as it's empty or reasonably empty, uh, that's going to be okay. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. So this is, this is a toothpaste value pack, supersize. Um, it's paper, so paper is recyclable. I think one of the challenges that sometimes people run into, they say, yeah, but it's, it's red, it's blue, you know, those bright colors. Does that cause a problem? And I would say, no, it doesn't. So when these go to a paper mill, they're going to be mixed with all sorts of other paper products. They're going to go into a pulper. It's going to be mixed in a slurry the colors are going to be either removed or just kind of fade into the rest of the, the brown items we have in there. So no issues with the color. Go ahead, recycle your paper. All right, we're down to just a couple of products left. We've got another PET container. Uh, and while this one looks to have a larger lid than one of the other uh, bottles we looked at or containers we looked at, and this lid is most likely not PET, you can still leave this on. The end users or secondary processors of this material uh, will have a process in place to remove and handle this material as well. So we're going to recycle that. All right, so we've got some, uh, looks like some playground equipment here. Uh, this is what we would call bulky rigid plastics. Uh, while this is recyclable and we do take some of this here, uh, we've got a size problem here. So this is more than likely to cause a jam in, uh, in our plant. So the general rule of thumb is if you can fit a product in your curbside bin, it's okay to come here. Obviously this would be a bit of a problem. Uh, but again, as I said earlier, it is recyclable. Uh, but don't just, don't just limit yourself to thinking about the, uh, the basketball hoop here. We also see products like uh, playground, other playground equipment, patio furniture that would fall into the same bucket. Um, so check locally. Uh, some municipalities, some counties will have convenience center sites where they uh, are set up to receive bulky rigid plastics. So again, while this is recyclable, this is not something that should be sent to a MRF in your curbside program.